Good morning and welcome to worship on this Sunday of Pentecost here at Grace and Peace Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Mary Benkin and I am joined by our organist Richard Pop and by my husband Nathan Johnson who serves St. John's Lutheran Church in Toluca, Illinois. Wherever you are and whenever you are watching, I hope that you are staying healthy and safe and that you are blessed. Our opening hymn today can be found in both hymnals. If you have a red ELW hymnal at home, it is number 398. Or if you have a green LBW hymnal, it is number 257. This is... Um, Holy, Holy Spirit, <laughs> Truth Divine. Thank you. We will sing the first three verses. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we might have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading today comes to us from the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. 
and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Oh, I think that I see our friend Minerva flying in. Let's hear what she has to say. Well, hello, Minerva. How are you? Ooh, well, Pastor Nathan, I've been watching the news, and it seems that it's a little bit of a sad week. How are you? You're right, Minerva. It has been kind of a rough week, but I'm excited that I have the opportunity now to worship God and to have a conversation with you. That always seems to cheer me up. Ooh, thank you, Pastor Nathan. I have a question about the story that we just heard. Oh, yeah, what's that? Ooh, well, it sounded in that story like the disciples were given new languages so that they could speak to other people in different languages. But I'm wondering, wouldn't it have just been easier for God to make everyone speak one language? Well, Minerva, you have a point. That certainly might have made things easier. But I don't think that that's what God wanted for their creation. God made a diverse creation because we are richer when we have different people speaking in their own voice in different ways than we would be if we were all the same. Ooh, that makes sense to me. It's nice that we have so many different kinds of people, and it's nice that we're able to all come together to worship God, and that God meets us without asking us to change first. That's exactly right, Minerva. That's a gift that God gave to those disciples on Pentecost because he wanted them to be able to get outside of their comfort zone and get outside of their own language and be able to learn from other people and their experiences. But you know what, Minerva? Ooh. That's not just something that God asked of his disciples 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost, but it's something that God still asks us to do as his body in the church today. Ooh. So do you mean I have to go learn more languages? Well, I'm not exactly sure that that's the message that we should be taking away from the story here. But instead, I think God is just asking us to uh, meet people where they're at. Not ask them to change for us, but instead try to hear what they are saying in their own way and see if we can't learn from them. Ooh, that's a relief because, Pastor Nathan, I'm an owl. It was pretty hard for me to learn English. I don't think that I could learn other languages quite as easily just yet. That makes sense to me, Minerva, and thank you for that good reminder. You know, we've been friends for kind of a long time, Minerva, and I've never thought about how hard it must be for you to get around in this human world. I've certainly never taken the time to learn how to speak owl so that I can talk to you better. Ooh. Sounds like maybe we both still have some work to do. Ooh. Well, I'm glad that we have this work to do together, Pastor Nathan. Could we talk to God for ask for God's help during this work as well? Oh, that is a great idea, Minerva. Would you meet me in a prayer? Ooh. Okay. Let's pray. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for giving us so many different kinds of people. Thank you for giving us so many different kinds of people. Help us to love each other just like you love all of us. Help us to love each other just like you love all of us. And all God's children say, Amen. Thanks for talking to me today, Pastor Nathan. Thank you, Minerva. Should we get out of here? Okay. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Good morning, church. Today is the day of Pentecost, 
a beautiful day in the liturgical calendar that commemorates the coming of the Holy Spirit. We heard one account of this coming in today's story from Acts. Jesus' disciples are gathered together in one place in Jerusalem when a rush of violent wind fills the entire house and tongues of fire come to rest upon each of them. This is the birth of the church. God had already come to us once in the person of Jesus Christ, who lived in solidarity with our fallen human condition and redeemed it. Now, on Pentecost, God comes to us again to create the body of Christ anew, not in the human form of the man from Nazareth, but in the gathered hearts of all who call upon the name of the Lord. This passage from Acts contains one of Scripture's most powerful images for the Holy Spirit, a rush of air. In both the Old and New Testaments, the word for spirit is the same as the word for wind or breath, the breath of God. We've been thinking about breath a great deal lately. For months, we have worried about a virus that steals away the very ability to draw breath. And now, we are confronted by the knowledge that just days ago, a police officer kneeled on the neck and crushed the breath out of a man named George Floyd. This sermon, friends, is primarily for those of us in the white Western church. For on Pentecost, it would be a mistake to overlook that the body of Christ contains multitudes of peoples and experiences. And yet, as those who have held power for so long, it is the white Western church that so often shapes the public narrative of what it means to be Christian. Pentecost is meant to remind us of the unity that we are called to embody as the hands and feet of God, to remind us of the fierce and fiery spirit of the divine that dwells within each one of us. The great mission that God has given to us is to extend the radical love of Jesus to each and every child of God. Some people refer to Pentecost as the church's birthday, a day meant for celebration. But if you are like us today, you do not feel like celebrating. Today, perhaps you are angry or grieving because we, as the church, have failed to faithfully carry out this mission from God. Jesus came that all might have life and have it abundantly. But in the two millennia since his ascension, we, the church, have not always behaved in ways that are life-giving. Here in the United States, states, our nation suffers from the continued sins of white supremacy and racism, of structural violence and institutionalized injustice. Our very denomination, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, claims to value progressive ideals and embrace the value of all human life. But our own fallibility is betrayed by the fact that we are among the whitest denominations in our country. Our lack of diversity belies our inability to free ourselves from these national sins in any meaningful way, leaving the hard work of change and peacemaking to our siblings in Christ who labor without the unearned privileges afforded to us by our demographic makeup. But Jesus calls us to another way. Jesus calls us to be better for the sake of the whole body of Christ. As the church, we are called to examine our history with honesty and humility, even when it reveals ugly truths about our own relationship to oppression and violence. As the church, we are called to listen without defensiveness to the experiences of the marginalized especially in this moment, to people of color. As the church, we are called to be better at loving our neighbors and to face our own discomfort when this love calls us to sit with them in the ashes. As the church, we are called to value life as God values it and to inhabit more righteous anger at its loss 
than at the destruction of property, the closure of buildings, or the temporary limiting of our freedoms. As the church, we are called to create space where all children of God are free to be vulnerable with one another, where they can speak truth without retribution and dare to build lasting peace. The gift of Pentecost is unity. God gives us each other because we are better together than we are alone. The beauty of this gift is that the uniqueness of each of God's children is not lost. That first Pentecost, God gave the disciples the ability to speak to their neighbors of every nation in their own tongue, not so that differences might be erased, but embraced. God gathers all children together at one table as a forgiven and beautifully diverse human family. Then, fed and nourished by the body and blood of our Lord himself, we are blown back into the world to burn with the fire of God's justice until the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Today, church, we remember that God breathed upon us with God's own breath of life. George Floyd, like too many men and women of color before him, can no longer breathe. But we can. We can breathe in repentance, and we can breathe out transformation. We can breathe in forgiveness and breathe out renewal. We can breathe in grace and breathe out love. Today and all days, may our every breath be filled with the Spirit of God that was given to us on that first Pentecost to create abundant life for all of God's people. Amen. Amen. As we prepare our hearts and minds for the meal of our Lord, I invite you to join with me as together we profess our shared faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join as we pray together our prayers of the people. These are prayers of intercession. They are our communal prayers. And so after each petition, I invite you to respond. I will pray, Lord, in your mercy, and wherever you are, whenever you are watching, you may respond. Hear our prayer. We will end together with the Lord's Prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, O Lord, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Whenever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. 
Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for your comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. As you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we will share together in the meal of communion. And if you are at home, I invite you to take a moment to pause this video and to go find something with which you might share in this meal. Traditionally, we use bread and wine, but there is a long and faithful tradition of using whatever elements are immediately available to you. God is present in this meal. also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give praise and thanks to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the day of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join there on died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Nathan, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Mary, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite you to join us in singing our closing hymn together. If you have a red ELW hymnal at home, you can find this as hymn number 582. Or if you have a green LBW, it is number 527. This is Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. And we will sing all three verses. Receive now this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Spirit of God hovered over the waters at the moment of creation. Like the universe exploding outward from the single spark of God's word. So the church became real. Put your hand on the ground. The earth itself is vibrating. The mountains, the oceans, the deserts, the creatures that live here are all breathing in. The planet is inhaling. Imagine the song it will sing, the song of Pentecost. Joy enveloped the disciples. Their words were understood and welcomed. Their joy was contagious. Their message was heard and translated and shared. The church moved into the world, bringing light, bringing love, covering all there was. There was no denying it. There was no going back. The church as we know it was born. God, we feel your presence. Let us use it. Let us take this rush, this moment, this Pentecost, shouting into a world that is bored stiff by life. We have been made aware of the presence of the creator of the universe. Give us the strength to keep it going. God is real. The church is born. The song goes on and everyone can sing. Amen.